now it's time to start pulling this transmission. First thing I got to do is undo the speedometer sensor and those crappy vacuum lines, which they're already unhooked for the most part, but I just don't want it dangling off of here when I'm pulling the transfer case and transmission out. But at least the uh, draft shafts will be easy to remove. I think the hardest part on this is just going to be undoing the, uh, the bolts underneath the skid plate for the transmission mount. And that's about it. All the wiring is now removed. That took all of two minutes. It's just so nice being able to access everything. But yeah, I had, of course, part of that harness I had to remove where the little uh, wiring harness goes back to the fuel pump and it runs along the frame rail and plugs into that harness right there. But that was simple enough. There's just not a whole lot of wiring to these uh, YJs. A whole lot better than the uh, wiring harnesses on those new JKs or even on the later model uh, Cherokees. I figured while I'm at it, I'll show the people that don't know why a slip yoke is a bad thing for off-road. So you can see here, I mean, transmission is kind of leveled out without the engine holding it up on the one end. But imagine if your rear axle drops down quite a bit with a suspension lift. And as you can see, how much that slip yoke comes out of the uh, transfer case. Now the more it comes out, the less spline contact there is and better chance of breaking something. Or, in the extreme case, it may come out completely. That wouldn't be good on the trail because then your drive shaft to be hanging down here or even worse as it's turning still with your front axle it'll be flopping around and beating and banging and everything or even break the yoke off the uh, front of the rear axle which I've seen happen before but slip yoke eliminator basically puts a regular bolt-on style yoke on the end of the transfer case and it moves it back quite a bit so instead of the U-joint being back here be quite a few inches further forward up here which you know that'll help out with drive line angles a whole bunch but maybe that'll help some people understand why they need to do that rear drive shafts now out it didn't take long and I've already taped up the U-joint so I don't lose the caps on the end and I Put a little bit of uh, painter's tape around the slip yoke so it doesn't get all rusty. I mean, I'm not going to reuse this drive shaft for anything, but somebody else might need it, and I'll keep it in good shape for them. I mean, it just needs a, a coat of paint, and they'll be good to go. I got the front drive shaft removed, finally. Of course, after I compress the slip joint in it. I guess the seal's bad in it because it decided to puke out all of its grease in a nice pile which I'll probably step in and track in the house later. But The uh, drive shaft was no problem removing just like the rear one that came out. No problem whatsoever. Plus, like I said before, it's just easier not having the body on the frame anymore. Just everything, uh, so much more room. But once you know where everything is with the body on, it's it's still not that difficult. It's just mainly a visibility thing right now. You can just see everything a whole lot better. But next, I'm going to go ahead and unbolt the 
transmission mount. I don't blind you with the sun there. I gotta unbolt the transmission. Just those two bolts there. And that one little bolt there. Or one nut. And uh, I'll be able to pick the transmission and transfer case straight up off of the skip light there and uh, may or may not take the transfer case loose depends on how strong I feel today but you know I'm, I'm keeping the transmission I may or may not keep the transfer case so just not sure exactly what I'm, I'm gonna do with that just yet sell it or whatever I mean I have plenty of these transfer cases in the shed so and uh, most of them are um, out of Cherokees, uh, 97 and up, but they work just the same. Which they do have that uh, actual neutral, which separates the front and rear drive shafts from each other for flat towing, which these older ones do not do. So back to work. All right, I got all the bolts removed, or all the nuts removed from the bottom of the uh, skid plate. So transmission and transfer case are ready to come right out. Um, I was about to start taking the exhaust loose of this flange right here since it does have a bracket that is connected over to the transmission mount, but I forgot that on this particular Jeep it's broken, so there's no need for me to unbolt it because it's not going to hold anything up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this real quick and set it on the ground. I decided just to leave the transfer case in place. I'm, I'm feeling extra strong right now. I'll probably hurt myself. Anyway, back to work. There it is. It's out. Transmission and transfer case. Had no problem whatsoever. I forgot that the uh, manual transmissions are a whole lot lighter than those automatics. So I'm glad I didn't take the transfer case off. It wasn't any problem. It was easy to balance. And I didn't even drop it on my feet. But I just basically lifted the uh, bell housing up and tilted it over onto this side of the frame over here. You know, just rotated the whole thing around. And then put one leg over the frame down in that area and uh, grabbed the tail shaft on that transfer case and grabbed the top of the bell housing and just picked it up. And Carried it over there and set it down. I'll probably feel it later though. But I'm just glad it's out. I think I'm going to call it a day though. I don't think I'm going to do any more. Um, tomorrow morning, calling for rain tomorrow, but I may go ahead and get this exhaust system out and the fuel tank out tomorrow. But that's all I'm going to do for today. And I think tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and pull the steering box out. But it's uh, it's definitely looking stripped. Not a whole lot left.